everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back or welcome if you are joining for the first time. In my last video, we did row one of my Kimberbell Spring Showers quilt and I'm so excited. It's so gratifying to see the first row done. I think the hardest part about starting a project is beginning, right? It's just so intimidating until you get going, but now I feel like I'm in my zone and I am so ready for the second row. So in this video, we are going to be doing two blocks that end up being sewn together to make one big scene. So we're going to be doing the tree branch and the beehive turns out so cute. I can't wait to show you how easy it is. And we're just going to start working on row two. And I know I said I'm only going to do one block per row, but I actually am going to do two. So the next video that you see is going to be another block for row two. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe if you want to see that one. It's really neat as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And if you need any help with anything that I am using in this whole video, be sure to check out that description box below. And I list all the things that you see on my craft table and all the things that I'm using. All right, let's go ahead and get going and continue working on this quilt. Okay, so we are starting row two of the spring showers quilt and we are gonna do two blocks today that will be sewn together to make one scene, if you will. So we're going to do the tree branch first and then we'll do the beehive second, then sew those two blocks together and it's gonna make a whole scene. You'll see as we go through it. So I have my stabilizer all hooped and I'm using the light mesh cutaway from Kimberbell. I find it to be completely beautiful for this quilt. I've used it on another project as well and it's just a beautiful stabilizer. And then just as I mentioned in my last video, I'm running out of this so I just ordered more, but I am using the Kimberbell fusible backing for the back of my fabrics. So you will see, now in my first video, I'll link it for you in case you missed row one, but I showed you how I take the back side and I ironed that fusible backing onto the wrong side of my fabric. So I did that, I did it on this piece, and then I did it on my two green pieces. So that's what I chose to do. I think it's absolutely worth it. It just makes your, fabric a little bit more stable and that just avoids any puckering and honestly when it comes to trimming it trims so crisp and nicely that I'm obsessed with it at this point. Okay and then I also have a piece of batting because we are going to be quilting in the hoop and making this entire quilt block from start to finish in the embroidery hoop. Other things that are important, the Kimberbell tape, I love it. It helps secure things as we are working so that nothing shifts as we're doing the applique portion. And then I have some various tools here that we will refer to as we're trimming and doing other necessary things. Okay, so we are all set to go. I am simply going to take my hoop over to my embroidery machine. I have my quilting and background quilting design already merged with my block file. I did that in Imbrilliance. So I did, you can do it separately if you would like, just pull up your background quilting. And then once that's done, you can pull up your actual quilt block file. But I like to merge them just so that we, I can just keep going and it's just easier for me that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we will go ahead and get started. Be sure to check that description box below the video in case you want a closer look at any of the things that you see me working with today. And other than that, let's get started getting these quilt blocks done and sewn together and we'll be one step closer to the second row of our spring showers quilt. Okay, so I have my placement line for my batting. That's just gonna show me exactly where I need to place my batting. So I'm gonna cover that placement stitch with my batting and then do the tack down stitch to secure it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to trim all of my excess batting and then we will start in the hoop quilting. Now, I want to remind you that you do need to purchase the quilting design separately from the Kimberbell website, and then you can just download them very quickly once you purchase them. So I did that, and I can't remember what I chose for this one. Maybe it was the clouds, but we'll see in just a moment when it, when it stitches out. But just trimming as close to that down line as I can and this is what helps us to not have batting in the seams because our next 
placement stitch is going to be a little further out than this and that placement stitch is going to have us lay down our background fabric. So here we go. This is our batting for our quilt block. And then the next step is it's going to do a placement stitch a little bit bigger than this rectangle. That will be for our background fabric, which is this really nice kind of robin egg blue. Okay, I did change my thread color because after I place my fabric down, we're gonna go right into background quilting. So I'm gonna do a really nice kind of creamy white. Okay, now that I have my placement stitch for my fabric, I know exactly where my fabric needs to go. So I'm gonna place my fabric over that. I like to tape mine down just to make sure everything's nice and tight. It doesn't shift at all. But the next thing we're gonna do is the tack down stitch, which will secure that fabric in place. After I run the tack down stitch, I'm just gonna go right into the background quilting. Looks like I chose the clouds, so you'll see it stitch out the clouds for the background. It's so pretty. Okay, isn't that background quilting just beautiful? I find it so mesmerizing to watch it do that. Now I'm switching out my thread color for a nice brown and we're gonna start the tree branch. So I am simply going to do the placement stitch so I know where to lay my fabric. Okay, so I have my placement stitch for my tree branch also gives you an up close look of that really pretty background quilting. I love the clouds. I think that's so pretty. Also, you're going to want to be mindful when doing this block because it does show you in the directions that you're going to want to move the file design over and down a little bit. Kimberbell goes through it beautifully in their instructions, so I'm not going to go through that, but I wanted just to just give you a simple reminder that that is a part of this block is moving the design just a little bit. Now I'm going to secure this with tape. Now I also want to mention that it does call for a felt here. As I mentioned in my last video, I don't love doing felt, um, especially on bigger projects like that. I just kind of feel like it maybe won't stand the test of time. I could be wrong, but it's not my favorite. So because I just want to be really confident with how this is going to last forever and ever, I decided I just want to do fabric. Um, you can definitely do the felt. It It's so beautiful. I've done felt on projects and it's so beautiful, but for this particular project, I wanted to kind of stick to fabric for um, the felt portions. I'm just kind of switching that out. So I did buy the fabric kit for this, but I also did use some fabric that I had in my stash when I wanted to do some replacing. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the tack down stitch next and then we are going to do the finishing stitch on the tree branch and the tree branch will be done. So you can see the outline of that tree branch and I'm going to remove my tape and I will go ahead and grab my scissors. I like my snips for applique. I have just learned to really really enjoy working with them but I'm going to try and trim as close to my stitch as I can without trimming it of course and then the next step is going to be our finishing stitch so that will be really pretty to see let me know if you're working on anything special right now I love to hear what everybody else is working on at their craft table of course I will save any fabric that I trim off and put it in my scrap fabric drawer I'm learning to really appreciate that drawer that I made for my craft room. It just makes it really easy to not only throw pieces in, but it also makes it really easy to browse through. Oops, trim also that feasible backing there. Uh, it makes it easy to also browse really quickly when I need just some smaller pieces because as someone who does applique, and as you applique lovers know, you really don't need a lot of fabric for that. So 
saving any and everything that you can can be really beneficial. Okay, so again, I'm using fabric here, but definitely use the felt if you would like. It does offer a beautiful texture, I will tell you that. I did the felt on my Lucky Us pillow that I just finished, and the texture was really pretty. Okay, almost done. I find the trimming to be so relaxing. Okay, there we go. Now, another thing I like to do is I like to keep a lint roller handy when doing applique. It just, if there's any types of little pieces that, you know, little types of thread that come off, I can quickly grab them and make sure that I keep this as clean as possible. That way my finishing stitches always look very nice. Okay, now, whoops, I have a little backing there. Okay, now I'm going to return to the machine and do the finishing stitch. But there is our tree branch. I think that looks really nice. So pretty. Okay, that finishing stitch is gorgeous. Now, because it doesn't matter what my thread color is, I'm gonna do the placement stitch for my leaves. So I'm not gonna waste time twitching out my thread just yet. So I'll just go ahead and run that next step. Okay, so here is the finishing stitch for the tree branch, as well as the placement stitch for the leaves, or the first set of leaves. So the first set of leaves are the darker of the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that my fabric completely covers those placement stitches. And I have some extra tape that I just put on my hoop here after I was done using it. So I will just use that to secure that down. I did change out my thread to a nice hunter green. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the tack down stitch really quickly. Again, that's just gonna go ahead and go right over that placement stitch that I just covered to tack down the fabric in those exact spots so that we can trim those pieces out. Okay, so we have our little leaves all tacked down. It's hard to see on that busy fabric, but in person it's fairly easy to notice. Place my tape off to the side, and then I'm simply going to follow those guides. The little stitches are my little cut guides, and I will trim around, revealing my cute little leaves. The reason I buy the Kimberbell fabric is because I feel like not only is the fabric really pretty, but they just put everything together so nicely um, in terms visually. I just think that it just, I don't know. I feel like I would probably spend way too long trying to coordinate fabric the way that they do. I'm sure I could do it, of course, but I don't know. It's just always so well done that I'm very, very happy to just buy the fabric kit. Okay, so there we go, trimming this out. Now, I originally picked kind of a hunter green, if you will, but I went ahead really quickly and just changed my thread to more of an olive green. I thought it would just be a little bit better. Okay, really quickly, I'm just gonna run a little lit roll over there just to clean it up. There are our little leaves, and now we're gonna do the finishing stitch.
Okay, so there was one tiny jump stitch that I need to trim, I noticed. It might even cover it once it does the finishing stitch, but I'm gonna go ahead and just trim it while I see it. Okay, there we go. And now I have my little placement stitches for my next set of leaves. You can see them right there. So really quickly, I will just cover those. Grab my tape. Grab my second piece of fabric that I'm going to use and tape that in place and run the tack down stitch. Don't forget to put your hoop all the way in. <laughs> I've done that before and then it doesn't stitch in the right spot. Okay, so the tack down stitch stitched down my leaves. It's a little hard to notice just because the fabric itself is a little busy, but in person you will know exactly where they are. They will stand out. But again, just gonna trim and reveal those leaves. Okay, and I like to move my hoop around as I trim just because I like my arm and hand to be in a certain position when when cutting. So I just kind of move it around in a circular motion until I get the job done. Okay, so now we are going to just finish this up by doing the um, decorative stitch around the light colored leaves. It's looking so pretty. Okay, so the leaves are all done and now I'm going to switch to a nice dark gray color because we're going to do a little trail mark in the sky. It's really cute for the little dimensional bee that will be added at the very end of the quilt if you choose to add it. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out in the dark gray. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is a little placement line for our cutting. So I'll just use the same gray. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be in the seam, so you'll never see it. So I'm gonna do it in gray just so that we can see it really clearly when we go to trim. Okay, we are all done with this block. All the stitching is done. So now we're going to take off our tape. We can save it for the next block, or you can replace it if needed. And now we can unhoop our quilt block. Put this to the side. So we're just going to rehoop in just a moment and do the next block. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to turn mine over, pull my stabilizer so that I can always see the blade of my scissors and I'm going to trim it right where that tack down stitch is. Turning and trim. And this just removes all of the stabilizer from the surrounding block. Now, I will have a tad bit of stabilizer in my seams because I'm not going to take out my stitches and remove my stabilizer from the seams. I've never had a problem because this stabilizer is so thin because of the stabilizer they recommend. Um, but if you wanted to remove the stabilizers from the seams, you can, but I never have had a problem sewing my blocks together and having it be an issue. So that is something that I don't worry about. Okay, so now this block is done and we're going to trim it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my orange pop ruler and I'm gonna bring in my rotating cutting mat. And it does say to trim it to six and a half by four and a half. So I found the ruler that is six and a half by four and a half. Now the reason we did this dark 
stitch on the left was because it's going to have us line up our ruler right on that line for cutting. And then it also says to trim it so that this bottom leaf is a quarter of an inch from the bottom. So we'll just follow that lead and that looks that looks good okay so I'm just making sure that that's nice and straight okay that looks straight to me so I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and I just like everyone has their own preference for how they do this but I am going to I just push outwards works for me I'm gonna rotate that way I'm always cutting on the right side and holding those rulers down. Now the rulers do come with some little grippy feet that you have to install on the back side. Highly, highly recommend you do that. When I first got mine, I was in a rush to work on a project and I didn't install the little rubbery feet on the bottom or back side and my rulers moved around a lot and therefore I made some mistakes on my first um, block. So not on this project. Luckily this project is going so smooth so far, but I just highly recommend it's kind of hard to see them, but do you see, Oh, you can see, yep. There's just a little rubbery feet. Just put those on the back side of your ruler. It will just secure it so nice. So it doesn't shift. Ooh, look at that. That looks really good. Okay. So now we have our finished quilt block. So let's go ahead and move on to the second quilt block, which is going to be the little beehive that goes right under here. So I'm going to clear my space really quickly and then we'll get to the second block and then we'll sew these together. Bringing in my hoop and grabbing my cutaway. I can't say enough good things about this stabilizer. It is so nice. I have more on the way because I'm using it quite a bit. Okay, there we go. And we have our stabilizer just laying on that back piece. Grabbing our top piece and there we go. Now that one got a little wonky so I just like to pull mine tight at the edges. Make sure I get any ripples out. It does the trick each and every time. Just pull it tight until it's really really nice and tight in there. Okay so there we go. So now I'm going to pull up the next embroidery design for our next quilt block on my embroidery machine and then we will go ahead and start stitching. Now I am going to do a lot of the same steps that I just did. I'm repeating them on the next quilt block with the different design. So what I'll do is I'm going to pull that up and I will go ahead and get my placement stitch for my batting done. I will lay that down, trim it, and then I'll get the placement stitch and tack down stitch for my fabric done. And then we'll meet back here. I'm just going to go ahead and do that because you've already seen me do it with the first block. It's the exact same steps. I'll go ahead and just roll the camera and play some nice music so you can still get an idea of what I'm doing, but you won't have to <laughs> watch it in slow motion. So let me go ahead and get that done and we will then start the applique part and we'll see this little beehive come together. Okay, so the background quilting is done. It will never ever not be so exciting to me to watch the background quilting and see the final result. It's so pretty. I love it. Okay, 
quick thread change. I'm going to switch to a black thread. So everything up into this point was the exact same steps as our previous quilt block. So we did our batting, we did our fabric, we did our background quilting, and now we're going to do the applique, which will be different for this block. So I'm going to do the placement stitch first. And we're working on the little opening for the little beehive and they have us using some embroidery leather. So that's really exciting. So I'm just going to place it over so that it only uses a tiny little corner of this big sheet. You could trim it down, of course, but I just put the whole thing on there and then have it have it just take what it needs and I'll trim off the rest. So I'm just going to tape it down on either side and then run the tack down stitch. Okay, so we have the little opening to our beehive and I'm going to take this tape off also going to trim. It looks like we have a little thread here that needs trimmed. There we go. Maybe another one. Okay, clean that up. Then I like to take my bigger pair of scissors and just trim the extra away. Okay, I'll save that. I'm not sure if it's going to call for it again in this quilt. It might. I just keep all of my embellishments together until the very end. And then once the quilt or project is done. I put all the embellishment extras in my little scrap drawer so I can use them for other projects. Okay. Trimming, trimming really nicely around that. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the stitch. Let's see. The next one is going to be the placement stitch for the beehive and then we are going to do flexi foam so let's go ahead and do that placement stitch really quick um, flexi foam is really neat it is a nice foam that you can use for embroidery again mine came in the embellishment kit but it gives that puffy raised look on the quilt block i've used it a few times so far in this um, project i used it once in the first row and then again in this second row I used it on another quilt block with the toadstools. It's really, really nice. It just gives it some dimension. So let's go ahead. We'll do the placement stitch and then we'll place our flexi foam down and get it trimmed. And then you'll see how cool this little embellishment can be to bring this just a really fun dimensional look. Okay, so there is our placement stitch letting us know where we need to place our foam. Again, I'm going to put the whole sheet on there, but gear it so that it's more in the corner. Okay, so there is the tack down stitch and you can see it is just really nice and puffy. It's going to give it a really nice dimensional look because after we trim this down, we're going to put our fabric on top. So again, I like to use my bigger scissors and just trim as close as I can to save as much as I can. We'll see if the project calls for this again. It's pretty fun to use. Okay, so again, using my little snips, I find it easiest to work with them with this pro product as well. But I'm gonna go around, it's very, very, easy to trim. Going around, trying not to trim my tack down stitch, but not a huge deal if you accidentally do, because we have a few more steps on top of this. Okay, let's rotate this. Let me know if you've worked with flexi foam before. I'm trying to think if I have worked on it before this quilt. Again, it's about my third time on this quilt using it so I kind of feel like I have a little bit of experience with it at this point. All good things. And I just feel like it's one of those things you want in your craft room because it'd be a really fun little way to build dimension on an applique project. Okay. Okay. Go, and then very carefully we want to trim out this centerpiece but you want to be careful because you don't want to scratch 
your faux leather. So I'm going to be very gentle. Looks like I didn't quite get through all the way there. Just kind of gently, gently go through the layers until you get to that bottom layer. And you'll get a feel for it with your scissors. There we go. And now being careful not to make any marks in my faux leather, especially it being a darker color. I feel like it would show. Okay. Being gentle, being gentle. Taking my time. Okay. Now I think the next thing it's going to do is the placement stitch for the fabric, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's going to do a placement stitch for our fabric. And it's honestly kind of silly that it does that because we know exactly where we need to cover our fabric. So in fact, you could just skip that step on your machine if you'd like and just go right to the tack down stitch since you already know where to put your fabric. But I'll go ahead and run that. So I'm gonna run the placement stitch, place my fabric, tape it down, run the um, tack down stitch, and then we'll come back and trim. And then I think we're about done. We're just gonna do some finishing stitches and get it all pretty. And then we will be done with this block as well. Okay, easy peasy. It's a lot of lather, rinse, repeat, especially when it comes to applique. You have your three steps on and on and on. So let me go ahead and just trim this out. And again, being careful with that middle piece to trim without getting any marks on my embroidery leather. Okay, finishing up the little inside of the beehive. Once you get it started, it's easy. Getting it started is a little tricky. Again, taking my lint roller, just making sure everything is nice and clean for the finishing stitch. And we're gonna go ahead and just let the machine run. It's going to do the final finishing stitch for the beehive. We'll do a thread change and do a little bit more decorative stitching and then trim this block off, sew it together, and we are done. Okay, finishing details on this block. We're on the last two steps. So just like we finished the last block, we're going to do a little trail, if you will, for the dimensional B, I think, or something. Um, we're gonna do a little trail at least, but I'm gonna change it to that dark gray again, just because that's what I did in the top block and I want some consistency there. And then after this, we're gonna do the same thing as last time and do a little line on the side to guide where we trim. All 
Okay. That block is done. Now, correction, I was um, thinking it was only gonna do it on one side, but it did it on both sides. Just some little guides for where we're going to trim our block next. So now we can just remove this embroidery tape and we can unhoop. Neat. Now, just like last time, we're gonna remove the stabilizer from the back. Go ahead and just do this however you feel the most comfortable. But again, I just like to do it like this. It's very visual for me too that I'm not going to trim into my fabric. And I just like to always see where the blade of my scissor is. So trimming this all away. And then just like last time, we're going to line up our orange popper rulers and trim this down. Also, I wanted to mention that I was talking about that fusible backing, but I only put that on, on my fabric pieces. So I wanted to mention that. That's why I left this embroidery leather out. I didn't back this with anything. So if you're gonna do the felt or the embroidery leather, you just use that as is. You don't back it with anything. Um, you only back your fabric with it. Okay, so put that away. And now let's trim these blocks down. Okay, I have my rotary mat back here. And now it wants me to line up. Now this is the same size as our first block. It is the six and a half by four and a half, but let me double check. Yes, yeah, six and a half by four and a half, but it wants us to line up the edges of our ruler with those trim marks there, those little placement marks, and then leave a quarter of an inch at the top, between the top where we're gonna trim and the top of that beehive, beehive excuse me. So just about right there. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to, let's see, double check, okay. Always triple check before you cut. Okay, that looks good to me. So now I'm going to take my rotary cutter again. I just press towards the outside so it just goes right in line. And I firmly hold down my ruler just in case it wants to shift. But again, install those little feet because those were a game changer for me. They were slipping and sliding before I put those feet on. Okay, there we go. And if you didn't get it in, in any of the corners, you can kind of redo that. But that looks good. Sometimes I don't quite get the little corner. And you can just go back and... Oh, I did pretty well. Okay. Whoop, little dangler there. Okay, so now we have that trimmed down. And now what we're going to do... We move everything aside. We are going to sew these two blocks together. And because we're going to be doing it at a quarter inch seam allowance, these two pieces are going to end up meeting together. So you're going to place your blocks one on top of the other, and then you're going to flip your bottom block over and match it up perfectly with your top block. And then I, you can use pins if you like. I just do not like the pins at all. I think they're a lot of work. Um, but I just like to use these clips. And you just make sure everything stays lined up. Line them up. And you can use as many as you like. So if you want to put some down this way, but then also you know, along the top, it's all, you know, better is, better is the one who overuses the clips, right? I don't know what I'm doing with the pink here, but let's just carry on with that. I might put one down here just to make sure nothing moves. And then we're going to sew these together. Okay. So turn that off. And I'm going to bring my sewing machine in. Now I just have some 
cheapy sewing machine that I got at Costco years ago, like 13 years ago. And I'm actually getting a new sewing machine, but I just haven't decided which one I want yet. So I have a couple in my cart that I'm trying to decide on. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance right down the side here. Okay, I am all done. And now I can remove my clips. I'll get out my ironing board. And what I'll do is I will sew my seams open. So now I will open this up. And look, look how good that looks. So now it's all sewn together. And we have one big block. I think that looks great. Now you can also, um, if you purchase the embellishment kit at the very end, when you're done making your quilt, these little bumblebees end up being a part of this scene. So one goes here, you can see their little trail and then another will go here. How cute are they? Aren't they sweet? So that is at the very end, but let me bring this up. I'll try to keep the little cuties on there. How cute does that look? I think that looks really, really nice. Now, you do see a tiny bit of gap even with that quarter inch seam allowance, but at the very end also, I'll show you in the book, they also have you placing, do you see here? They have you placing a dimensional leaf. So it looks like we're going to do some leaves at the very end and then it covers that little area right there. So don't sweat it if yours has a little gap like mine did. I kind of just panicked a little bit that I didn't do a perfect job, but it looks like it's just gonna be covered anyway. And I believe I did a perfect quarter inch, so that must just be how it is, but I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly grab my little iron and I'm going to just, or I'm going to iron these seams open. So just like this, so I'm going to open up those seams and I will just iron that open. That way it's just nice and clean on the back. So I'll do that after it's just simple ironing. And then next door, I did these the other day. These were so fun. And I did all of them in one hooping in my eight by eight mighty hoop, just the same hoop I used today. Um, but look at the little bees. So there are four. Again, I did all four in the same hoop just to save some stabilizer. And they have the dimensional wings. How cute are they? And they are just so sweet. So they are going to go once we get them sewn all together. And I have to get them in the right order. But they're going to go down this side. And then they'll be sewn to this block. But how cute. I love it so much. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was just relaxing in some way. I love watching embroidery take place, whether it's in my craft room or someone else's craft room. I love watching video tutorials on embroidery because it's just so, so fun. But I hope this was enjoyable for you and that you learned a thing or two along the way. And I hope you're enjoying this little journey of my first quilt. I'm really enjoying it as well. Again, I'm gonna choose one block per row, but spoiler alert for the second row, I'm gonna do two blocks for you because I just can't help it. There's another one coming up that I thought would be fun to do together. Okay, so here it is all sewn together and I put all of the other quilt blocks together with it. I love how it turned out. I also love the fabric choice. I think that was really, really fun. And then again, at the very end, you can add, if you bought the embellishment kit, you can add the three-dimensional bumblebee to that. Also, next door are a couple other quilt blocks. So there's four in a row that you do separately. I did them all in one hooping, but these are really fun because they have dimensional little wings on them that you do separately and I think they are so neat so I love the little bumblebee blocks next door it looks really really neat and fun so this is the entire second row all done I'm really excited in the next video I'm going to be showing you how to do the log cabin block this is so fun so I hope you tune in next time I can't wait to show you how to make this you're going to make this three times on this quilt so it's really really fun and easy and it's really great 
gratifying to see put together. All right, thanks so much for joining me for my second row. I feel like it's coming together. This is really exciting. It's really, really gratifying to see it piece by piece getting bigger and bigger and just seeing all of the scenes take place. All right, I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.